Okay, welcome back. This is our uh, video series on how to um, uh, implement this basic single cycle MIPS computer in, uh, in VHDL. And we've done a lot so far. We've done MUXs, sign extenders, ALUs. I think I did the register file last time. Well, what I want to do today is kind of create a little instruction memory. Now, really, you'd kind of use some RAM already built on there and some type of, oh, I don't know, interface or LSPR or something to program. But um, I'm going to kind of just simulate a simple um, instruction memory in VHDL just so we can kind of focus on component instantiation and the overall function of the processor. So today is the instruction memory. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And if we go back and look at our project that we've been developing, we've got an ALU, we've got uh, a MUX, we've got a register file, sign extender, and then I actually have a MIPS right now. I did a, that a few videos back that just had the MUX and the sign extender. Well, we need to get all our components before we start building the MUX. So at this point, let's go ahead and add a component. And um, let's see, project new source. We'll make this guy a VHDL module, and I'll call this uh, instruction memory. Okay, instruction memory, and let's see, it's a VHDL module, and that's fine. Now, what kind of things go into this? Well, um, you've got a read address, because it's a memory, right? A read address, okay, so what are you reading? Uh, you're going to, that's an input, you're going to read, and you're going to read uh, something that is 32 bits. You're going to read an instruction. Okay? So what comes out of this? Well, what comes out is the actual instruction, okay? It's an output, and it also is 32 bits. It's the actual 31 down to zero. It's the actual instruction. So instruction memory. You know, you give it an address, you read an instruction. Okay. Next, finish, and here is my stubbed out VHDL. Okay. And I'm going to keep this guy around because you never know when you're going to need that. I don't think I'm going to use that. And there you go. Here's my port statement. Let's put those guys on the next line here. Tab over. Kind of like it to look a little bit like this to kind of show the structure okay, of that. There's my uh, entity block. It has a read address going in, instruction going out. Let's go ahead and put the uh, PDF back up there and kind of verify. Yeah, here's my read address going in. Here's my instruction going out, both 32 bits. Okay. All right, how do you implement something like this? Well, let's see. What I need to do is I need to kind of use my old friend the uh, type command because I want to create a data structure that will resemble a memory. And I can do it by this. And uh, my memory is going to be 32 bits wide. Okay. And I'm only going to set up a memory of 16 words. You know, I mean, uh, clearly it'd be much bigger than that, but I'm just trying to keep things simple here. So I'm going to have a 16 by 32 memory. So there's my 16 elements. There's my 16 memory locations. And each memory location is 30. 2 bits wide. All right, so that's the type. Now what I have to do is I actually have to um, create an instance of this guy. All right, so let me copy and paste that code into here. So when you create an instance, you, uh, you do this. Okay. So let's uh, try to get all this on the screen. And again, it's in the uh, <coughs> um, after the architecture keyword, but before the begin end block. And I'm creating a signal called IM for instruction memory. The data type is RAM 16 by 32, which I defined up here. Uh, it's 16 32-bit quantities. And then I just uh, give them default values. So here are my memories, memory uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 15, 0 to 15. And what I'm doing is I'm populating this first memory location with uh, hex 01285024. Well, that's actually the binary pattern for an AND T2, T1, T0. Because throughout the course, you've been looking at these commands and converting them to binary. Well, this command, this right here, is the um, binary representation of an OR command. And then right here, this value is the binary representation of an ADD. And then this command right here is a subtract, subtract command. And this one right here is set less than. And then I've got a branch equal command where I'm comparing S0 and S1. And if I want to change that to a different branch equal, I've got over here, I don't know if you can see that. 
Yeah, so I can use 1211 FFFB and do a branch equal comparing S0 and S1, which would be, you know, I could set it up to be false. But then I can also change that uh, value in other simulations to be 1210 FFFB, where I'm comparing S1 to S1, and that would be true. So it gives me a way of testing the branch for when it's true and when it's false. I just go back and change it. And then I just repeat the commands, and, or, add, subtract, set, then, less than. Then notice my last command is a 0810 quad 0. Well, that's a jump to address 4000. Okay. So when you look at that, um, here is my binary representation. This guy right here is the opcode. The opcode for a jump is a 2. And then the immediate value would be this guy right here, which would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 in hex. I'm jumping to 4, 0, quad 0. Well, you need to divide that down by 4 because you uh, want to express it in words. And 4, 0, quad 0 is basically 1, 0, quad 0. Okay. So that would map to this value in hex, and that would be a jump to address. So we're going to jump right back up to the beginning, which is my add instruction. So I've kind of like uh, set up a memory structure, and I've put some... Uh, data in the memory, and then I'm going to read those guys. Right. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look at how we would actually uh, implement this. And it's pretty trivial, actually. Let's go down here to the begin in block on this, and we will do this. Right. And there you go. So what I'm doing here is I am setting my output based on the read address. The read address comes in, and I use a conditional signal assignment statement. And I say the instruction is equal to uh, quad zero, quad zero, when read address is equal to um, four minus uh, 40 quad zero. So whenever it's equal to this, we're in a reset state. Okay, we're not incrementing it. Else is when I want to take it. So I'm going to bring the read address in, which is going to be like 40 quad zero or 40 zero 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 four or 40 zero 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 eight. And I'm going to subtract, I'm going to convert it to an unsigned, and then I'm going to subtract off this value. Well, that value is 40 quad zero. So if somebody gives me 40 quad 0, this quantity right here is going to be 0, because I'm going to subtract it off. Uh, if they bring in 40, 0, 0, 0, 4, well, when I subtract off, I get 4, and then I'm going to divide it down by 4, and then use that as an index into my array up above. So 40 quad 0 will map to the 0 element. 40, 0, 0, 0, 4 will map to the 1 element. 40, 0, 0, 0, 8 will map to the 2 element, and so forth. So I can extract the memory. So I just did a little simple translation there, all right? So this is more kind of a simulating, not necessarily a real memory, but, you know, it's sufficient for our purposes, okay? Well, let's go ahead and uh, compile that and see if it works. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so now where's my, um, where's my instruction memory? It's right up here, okay? And we uh, highlight that, and we uh, double-click on check syntax. And looks like I've got a couple errors here. Well, let's see if we can uh, figure that out. Uh, 37, it says it does not like the two integer declaration. Well, we all know what that's about, right? Yeah, got to make sure we put that uh, numeric standard guy in there. You need your numeric standard to mess around with signed data and use all those conversion functions. Okay, so back to instruction memory, behavioral check syntax. And there you go. We're good. All right, so I think I'm going to stop here. And in the next video, we'll set up a test bench to actually test this guy out.